What's up, guys? Welcome back. We got a special guest today. Special guest today. I never have guests. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about Barrio Azteca today. Oh, Los Aztecas. They are a Mexican American gang originally from El Paso, Texas. The gang was formed in the jails in El Paso. I did time with these guys in federal prison and in, and in uh, El Paso County Jail when I was there for my little extended stay. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about them and you already know, let's get into this. With demand comes supply. I always say that. From small bands of teenage thugs, the rival gangs have grown into citywide armies. The Bloods and the Crips. Attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling. Six times failing. I went back to prison, got my head right. What's up, JC Ron Strong? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, subscribe, hit the bell, don't miss nothing. If you are part of my Ron Strong family, what's up, Rasa? Welcome back, Subanse a Suburban. Let's get this trip going. In 2008, Barrio Azteca formed an alliance with the Linea. The Linea is the armed wing of the Juarez cartel. Pretty much it's the muscles, it's the ones that take care of business. To fight off the forces of the Sinaloa cartel who were attempting to take over the plaza. I talked about this before in the past. Drug smuggling routes in the area control, you know, they control the routes. Ciudad Juarez is known as the Juarez Plaza. It's a vital, it's vital for drug trafficking organizations since they are the major, major pipeline into the United States. It is said that uh, the stats, the DEA stats are 70% of all drugs come in through Juarez. Don't know why, but that's what it is. You know, the United States, uh, considers this a uh, 911 area and you know whoever controls it makes a lot of money the gang's primary source of income you know is from smuggling drugs across the border uh, people uh, like I've said before all these gangs that are on the border have a vast amount of work and jobs they could do in order to make money especially if they hook up with the cartels they're also responsible for the distribution and sale of narcotics on both sides of, you know, the U.S. and Mexico. Besides drug trafficking, they have uh, been known to be hired for, for murders. And the thing is, since they are American and Mexican, they could go back and forth, back and forth. It makes it really easy for, you know, an American citizen to be coming back in and coming, coming back. So it makes, it makes the movement a little so bit So pretty easier. much the gang operates in the U.S. and Mexico. It's, uh, it's morphed into a, more than a gang, pretty much. It's, it's become an organization just because of the line of work and money that's coming in. Um, and the drug wars. Members usually have a U.S., like I said, U.S. citizenship, so it makes it ideal to cross the border and come back. And it's a, it's a plus. I did time with these guys in the federal prison in El Paso, La Tuna, and... When I was there, yeah, they, they pretty much ran the yard and controlled most of the drugs and, and whatever was going on. So, you, so you, you gotta think about it like this. When you are the one with the most numbers, whether it's at the border or in the prison, you pretty much control everything that's coming in and out. That is money, you know, gambling, everything, everything. So it makes you a key player. Now, one thing that I did notice once I went back into federal prison and I had violated, and this is after, you know, the war kicked off with uh, the Baisas and, and everybody else, that there were actually, they had a lot of enemies this time around. When, um, 
when I was at the yard in El Paso, uh, Texas, La Tuna, um, I must have said there must have been like about 70 there. I had a couple there with my boys and my friends that I hung out with, played cards with, uh, you know, blah, blah. And I was, you know, and you guys heard my, my, uh, my other video, you know, I hung out with a lot of the homies, um, Southsiders from California. But this time when I came back into federal system, I noticed that they were not allowed on a lot of yards because they had a lot of enemies. I don't know why or what happened, what made that transition happen. But I guess there's certain yards where they only get sent with uh, people that they're not fighting. And usually this happens with uh, larger gangs or just gangs that are just, they, they want to get into stuff. So they, they've, they've had wars with pretty much everybody. You know, there's, there's no, I can't sugarcoat it at, at all pretty much because... It's it's like when um in the feds the the, the uh, DC boys are really famous when they come on the bus you know there's gonna be a lot of havoc on the yard because a lot of them just don't give a fuck they're they're gonna go all all in and and that's the thing that's how I kind of looked at Barrio Azteca is that they had a lot a lot of soldiers that just didn't care so they went in they made a lot of enemies and sometimes it's not good man sometimes it's not good because this is the thing is it. And all the prisons in America, you're always gonna see Southsiders. You're always gonna see Maras. You're always gonna see Latin Kings. You're always gonna see Bloods. You're always gonna see Crips. These are really big gangs that have a, lo a long arm in the whole system. The whole system, whether it's federal, state, it doesn't matter. Yes, you know, like Chicago, there's a lot of homegrown gangs that have been there since day one and they've, they've are still there and, and they don't let a lot of outside gangs come in. Um, it's really hard for an outside gang to come into Chicago and start, start a set just because a lot of the gangs in Chicago have been there for so long and they have so many different sets that they're really, they're really like spread out. Um, same thing in California I've seen with the, with the Sureños, you know, a lot of the gangs that have been there, they've been there for a very, very, very long time. It's, it's, it's culture. So, you know, um, there's a lot, of, a lot of tension on the yard with those guys. And like I said, I've never had no beef with nobody in terms of gang stuff. Only when I was at home and I was gang banging and I was, you know, actually into the game where we were, you know, trying to kill each other for, for a street and a color when I was young, when I was a kid. But once I got older and I went into, you know, the politics and prison and everything, if I had to go, it was for a reason. You know what I mean? I never made my people crash. I never, we never fought for no reason, you know. And, and the major things that a lot of people fight in prison because of respect is, is pretty big is either money, drugs, gambling, you know, um, pretty much the basics. Pretty black and white. And that's the thing is that Something must have happened in order for this change, this change that, that, I, that you have. And I think I got a couple of uh, subscribers on my channel that are actually from Barrio Azteca. And um, no disrespect or nothing, I got nothing but love for, for all, all the organizations and everything. Um, throw me a comment, tell me what happened, what was the transition of... Of, of, of that, uh, like I said, when I was in El Paso, I was really close friends with Cricket. He's the one that had the yard for, for the Aztecas uh, there in, in Texas. But I, I make, like I said, I make these videos to inform people of, people don't realize how many like Mexican gangs are out there, how many organizations, how many like, how this, this, this culture of, of being a gangster has it been embedded in us since day one here in America because uh, it, it's been a warrior city here in Mexico. You know, it's, they make movies about it and all that stuff, but people don't realize how big this really is, how much money these, uh, you know, organization gangs, I call them organizations because I, I think gangs sound like, like a bunch of kids that are spray painting on a wall or something, you know. Um, 
a lot of these organizations slash gangs are ran like companies with you know paying dues and making money and blah 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 yeah there is wars there's there's things that happen that shouldn't happen but it is part of i think everything and i mean like I said, when I hit the low and I seen all those criminals that were white collar guys that stole millions and millions of dollars, they looked that different just because they wore a white shirt and tie to work. A criminal is a criminal, whatever it is that you do. So I don't, I don't judge nobody. I don't look nobody down. Nothing. I ain't, I ain't nothing like that. I don't like when it's done to me, so I don't do it to nobody else. So the reason why I do these videos is to inform people that want to know about this lifestyle, they're intrigued by this lifestyle, and they, they want to know, you know, why not share information? Why not give people the real story instead of them watching a fake movie on, on TV or, or channel about, you know, like Sons of Anarchy and stuff like that? No, why don't we give them the real deal of somebody that lived it, somebody that did it? And like I said, if you guys got any comments, drop them. Let me know. Also... Happy Cinco de Mayo. I also want to ask you guys to throw a comment down. Tell me if you guys know what Cinco de Mayo is. Because <laughs> let me tell you, half of these people over here celebrating it don't know what it is. Don't know what they're celebrating. It's not the Mexican Independence Day. It's not. Uh, and, and a lot of people uh, have missed uh, the, the actually trying to learn what it, what it really is. It was one battle, one battle. If you guys tell me with who and what we won that day, you know what I mean? Let's do this. I'm, my name's JC. I am Ron Strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Give somebody a hug. Live savage. And remember, like I say all the time, you have one life. But if you live it right, one life is all you need. Because in this fucked up ass world, we have to lead by example and actually show people that you could change. I'll see you guys in the rebound.